Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra 1, Chapter 6.6 .6 Notes. Today we're talking about solving absolute value equations. Our learning target today is to be able to solve absolute value equations with one variable. So here's a, re a little review from about four chapters ago. What are the solutions of the following equations? See if you guys can remember. brain's working. Can you remember that far back? No. X. Remember that absolute values inside makes everything positive. Okay? So the absolute value, we can actually have two different answers to this equation. Okay? X can be a positive 4, but it can also can be a negative 4 to make a true statement. So we can have a negative 4 or a positive 4. Now for number 2, there's only one answer for that. Because do we have a positive or a negative 0? No. So the only answer for this one is 0. Now for number 3, is there any way that we can make that a negative without changing the equation? And the answer to that is no. So for this one, there's no solution. So when we are solving absolute value equations, there are three possible answers. Okay? It can be two solutions. And that's when we have the absolute value equal to a type of number? Uh, a positive number. Okay? We can have one solution, and that's when we have the absolute value equaling zero, and then we can have no solution. Okay, so no solution is when you have the absolute value symbol but then you have an equal to a negative number, okay? So today we're going to be working about solving positive absolute value equations. Or not all positive, but you'll see what I mean. So if an absolute va uh, value equation can be solved, you must separate the equation into two parts, like the example below. So what we're saying is, since 5 is a positive number, we know that it's going to have two solutions, okay? So those two solutions are going to be x minus 3 equaling a negative 5, or x minus 3 could equal a positive 5, but we don't have to draw that positive symbol there, okay? Because whatever is in here, that's what's going to equal, okay? Either the positive or the negative. So, let's take a look. And then, taking a look at these, to figure out what x is, all you got to do is solve it. Okay? Add 3 to both sides. We can get x equals negative 2. Add 3 to both sides. And we get x equals 8. Okay? So, x equals negative 2. Or x equals 8. So these are our answers right there. Okay? So, let's go through and take a look at these. Solve the following absolute value equations. We have the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 11. Okay? Now, that's good. We don't need to change anything. And we have a positive answer, which means we're going to have two problems, okay? So x minus 3 equals negative 11, and x minus 3 equals positive 11. This is the number that we have to change, okay? We're not going to change anything inside the absolute value, okay? So we've got two problems to solve. Add 3. 
x equals negative 8. In the next one, we have to add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals 14. And there you go. We're good. All right, so taking a look, we have a positive number. That means we're going to have two answers, okay? So if you need to draw the two arrows to remind yourself, negative 2s plus 7 equals negative 9, and negative 2x plus 7 equals positive 9. Once we get the equations all by themselves, what are we using to solve? We're using sad map. Okay, just the reverse order of operations. Nothing else has changed from that. Okay? So, drawing our lines to see the two different sides. We have to subtract 7, and we get negative 2x equals negative 16. Divide by negative 2, and we get x equals 8. On the opposite side, we have to subtract 7 to both sides. To get negative 2x equals 2. And to get the x by itself, we divide by 2. And we're divided by a negative 2. And we get x equals negative 1. And those are our two answers. Not too bad, are they? I'm writing kind of small, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so we have a positive, which means we're going to have two equations, negative 7 and positive 7. Let's go through and solve these. Add 3. We get 2x equals negative 4, divide by 2, x equals negative 2. Okay, add 3 to the other one. We get 2x equals 10, divide by 2, x equals 5. Number four. Take a look at it. Ooh, what's that mean? Do you need to go back up to the top to remember when it's no solution if it's got a negative number? So number four is actually no solution. You don't even have to do any work on that one. Okay. All right, number five. Ooh, five's another special case. Okay, we're only going to have one answer because it's equal to zero. Okay, so let's go through and solve this. Subtract the 8 to both sides. 4x equals negative 8. Divide by 4. x equals negative 2. All right, number six, go ahead and pause the video. You guys are all on your own. Okay, so when you go through and solve those two equations, you do get x equals 8 and x equals negative 2. All right, let's go ahead and turn the page over. Now, looking at our directions, it says if there are any operations Outside of the absolute value, we must cancel them first. Okay? So, let's take a look to see what that looks like. So, I'm just going to draw the line right there. And we got that negative 2 outside. We really can't have that. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to add 2 to both sides first. And we get the absolute value of x minus 7 equaling 7. Okay? So from there, now we can separate it into the two problems. It's positive, so we're going to have two answers. Okay? 
And now we're just doing the same exact thing. Add the 7 to both sides. We get x equals 0. Add 7 to both sides. x equals 14. Okay, so once again, number 8, we've got 8 on the outside, so we have to subtract that. The absolute value of x minus 6 equals 11. And then split that, it's positive, so we're going to have two answers. x minus 6 equals negative 11, x minus 6 equals positive 11. And go through and solve. Okay, and 6, x equals negative 5, and 6, x equals 17. All right, number 9. So we have to subtract the 8 to both sides, and we get the absolute value of 5 minus x equals 9. That's a positive, so we can break it up into two problems. 5 minus x equals negative 9. 5 minus x equals positive 9. Let's go ahead and pause the video and see how you do on this one. Okay, so subtract 5 to both sides, and then don't forget that negative sign, okay? You have to divide by a negative 1 on all of those, okay? And you get x equals 14, and x equals negative 4. All right, number 10. So, to get the x by itself, what do we have to do? Well, we've got a number on the outside, so let's get rid of that first x minus 9 equals 3 minus 11 is negative 8. Ooh, negative on the outside, what's that mean? Did you remember that that's a no solution? Okay, that's your answer. Alright, number 11. We haven't done a problem like this before, what do you think? Just remember that a number outside, that's multiplication. And to get rid of multiplication, you need to divide. Okay. So, I'm going to leave that one for you guys to do. And number 12. Okay. 11, we made it a little bit easier. Just remember that you should cancel the 4 first, because remember you're following the rules of sad math. Okay? So, pause the video, and then 11 and 12. Okay? Good luck. Alright, and there you go. For number 11, you get x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. For number 12, after you add the 4, you should get 36 over here. And then we're multiplying that 9, so you have to divide it by both sides. And you get 4. It's positive, and we split it up into 2. And then your final answers are x equals 0 and x equals 4. Okay? Well, your homework is on the bottom of this page, and it does have the solutions mixed up in there. Okay? So, technically, you should get 100% on your homework tonight. That's going to be it for Algebra 1, Chapter 6.6 .6 Notes. If you need any assistance, please come see Ms. Carranza or myself, because we would love to help you out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys.